welcome back everyone in the last couple of videos we were able to set up a Django project we set up postgres we also went ahead to set up bootstrap and all the other static files we set up our main page wrappers for authentication pages and also the main app pages so in this one i want to go ahead and deploy this application to heroku so i'm going to be deploying it in two ways one is using the cli so I'm going to use the Heroku CLI to deploy it and then later I will show you how to deploy from GitHub and then I'll show you what the differences are and what uh, the importances of each are. So we are with Django, we are going to use this module called Django Heroku. It takes care of everything that we would need to configure our app to run on Heroku properly. So you see we need to install, we need to install it first. So let me first get it. So here in my project, if I run ls, I need to run ppnv shell just to activate my virtual environment. So I'm already there. So now we can install Django Heroku by using ppnv. So run ppnv install Django Heroku. So once this is done, once this is done, we are also going to install a simple like HTTP server to run on the to run our application on. Uh, like on Heroku, because right now what we have is this development server that Django ships with. But when we deploy to to Heroku, we are going to need a server to run the application. So this G Unicorn is 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 really popular and it's really simple to use. So we are going to use this one. It has a module for Python that we can easily tap into. So let's also install it. So ppnv it's called G Unicorn like that. It's ppnv install, sorry about that. So ppnv install g unicorn. That should also install. Then what we need to do now to set up this is from here on the, doc on the documentation of Django Heroku, we just need to import it and then configure it with our settings. So let me copy that just so we can save some time. So here, basically we need to import it and then we need to, to like configure it with our settings here so once we finish this then now we need to set up like instructions on how heroku should be able to run our application so the way we do that is you know now we've just installed a simple http server so now we are going to have to create a file called proc file so what the proc file does is it's going to have the main instructions that Heroku will use to run the application. So one of the main things we need to do is set up like a process that we run to accept requests and, and the like. So we are going to define how it's going to be. So you, you need to write a web process, then we need to run it using gunicorn. So it's gunicorn, gunicorn, and uh, gunicorn. I believe that's it. We'll find out of course so g unicorn basically the way the way it works is you give it an application instance so our application instance is, is this so if you look at this wsgi wsg sgi so this is our application basically this is everything exported to run to be able to run on the web so we need to to show it this file so the way we show you the file is we basically have to show it where it is and then the, the file itself so here it's going to be it's going to be expenses website w s g g i w s g i yeah you can actually test, test it out so i'm going to copy the command this is what we will run to, to run the server on, on heroku so you can see it actually runs the application so we are sh now we can be sure that the command that, that will run on Heroku will basically run our application. So once we have that, now we need to initialize a git repository. So now, if we look at our project structure, you notice that our environment files are outside. So I want to start by bringing them inside, just so we can add them to, to git themselves. So that one is inside, even the, the, the log file is inside. So right now, if we do an ls, you can see that all our files are in one place. So now we can do git init. So now it initializes a git repository. Now that we have done git init, we can now create our Heroku, uh, our Heroku app. So from if you've installed the CRI, now you're going to be able to, to run. After you run Heroku login, now you're going to be able to run Heroku create. So now we can give it a name. I'm not sure if I would even done this. Anyways, so... 
to give it a name we're going i'm going to call this one truly expenses i'm going to add up just so it's, it's unique so once you do that you see it's going to create the app for you and then it's going to return you two things one of them it will be the the, the gate remote for for heroku another one will be what will be the, the live deployment url so once we have this you can run git remote dash v to see the, the remote the remote repository is connected git remote not remove so you can see that heroku now is already added so if it happens that you're running like a project that's already on that's not on git and then you create a project you create an app before you initialize git you can actually copy out this and then manually add remote so to add remote if if maybe you created the project before initializing git you can add that by doing git remote add heroku then you add this heroku git so now it's already it's already there so now what we need to do is basically push to it so to push to it we need to run git this was say git status so we can see all our files are not added, so we can add them, git add, all of them, git commit, I'm going to add a message, maybe we are deploying, so deploy, then I can add like deploy, 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 this app, okay, so you can see this now, commit all our, our files to git now we can push them to any remote so we are sure we already have the heroku one so we can push to heroku the master branch okay so see it's pushing to heroku so basically what it's going to do now is push all our code to heroku and then heroku will handle everything for us it's going to go through all the process of like getting the code and then it's gonna like deploy it and then it's going to get back to us with the deployment link if everything goes fine if if they all don't go fine then it can give us a reason why and we'll fix it from there so you can see it's running correct static and that's because if you can see here i saw it around here you can see it copied out all the static files so now it's looking at our settings.py then looking at these so these details are now helping it to know how to process our, our our static assets so now it's getting back to us and it's telling us that the, the deployment was done and it's giving us a link so let's check it out and see what we have okay so i can see we have a title and yeah we are live all right so this is well and good we are live those are the basic steps you're going to need to take to deploy using the cli as you notice that it's very quick the most advantage of this is you can always deploy anytime just committing your code to git and updating heroku that's all you're going to need to do to to keep your project on sync and live with with people here so maybe just to to finish this up i'm going to show you something that you can do here that you will always come in handy when you're using the cri so if you look at the way we run this project for the most part we will be like working in the terminal we're running migrations and the like so for you to run this on Heroku, you're going to run Heroku, run, then you're going to like request for the terminal. So you run bash, Heroku run bash. So you can see it's running bash on truly expenses app. And this hopefully should get back to us with a terminal console that we can like tap into and run our commands. Okay, so we are back. So right now you see we are in our application. If I run ARS, and this of course is running on a network, so it's going to take some time to, it won't be as fast as running on your local machine. So you can see now we have our project, we have everything here. Let's say we wanted to come in here and like run migrations. And by the way, looks like it's, it's, it somehow sets up the requirements CXE file, but those are the details that it uses. If you want to run like migrations, we're going to run Python. Here we have access to our manage.py file, which is here. So manage.py, you can now like run, make migrations. First we have like migrations made, but you can run like migrate, which I think we haven't even done on local, but this is how you would run it on the, on the console. So executing the command, you can see, basically works as if you're, you're on your own machine. So this is well and good. I just thought I would, I would throw that one in just so it can be helpful later. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here. Okay, so if you're new here, please subscribe to the channel just so you can keep in the loop, get notified when we post new videos. I'll see you guys in the next 